So hello everyone. What we're going to do now is as an application of unitary transformations, we're going to have a look at three physical pictures which you are probably going to use your whole life. The interaction picture, the Schrodinger picture, and the Heisenberg picture. So see you later then. So this is uh, still a preamble for our non-classical light. And these pictures are widely used and they are important in many, many, many areas. So these are main motivations. Uh, if you want to discuss unitary transformations, uh, you really have to look at these three pictures. So, Schrodinger picture is something that we are all a bit familiar, familiar with because so far we have assumed that the state vectors evolve in time and the observables remain constant in time. So if you apply a time evolution operator to a wave, uh, to a wave vector or to a, to a vector in state space at a time zero and you evolve it from zero to T, you get uh, another cat, uh, psi t. Now, why can we not consider that the operators and not the states evolve in time? We could. And this is what we know as the Heisenberg picture. So what we could do is we could choose a transformation such that this transformation would undo everything that time evolution operator does. So it would be the inverse of the time evolution operator. And this means that the state of the system would not evolve. For instance, this would be Psi Heisenberg, and you would apply this transformation, which is this T, uh, to this cat, uh, which is this Psi T in the Schrodinger picture. So this is UT, Psi Schrodinger not, which is our initial time for simplicity, we took it to the zero. And you apply this from uh, this transformation following what we have learned with regard to unitary transformations. And you get this expression in the Heisenberg picture. And I notice what happens that this transformation is going to cancel out with uh, what you had before. So u minus one t uh, acting upon u t is going to hinder this uh, system from evolving or this state vector from evolving. The system will have to evolve in another way, but uh, what you see is that it satisfies all the criteria that we expect from a, an unitary transformation. Uh, if you go through all those properties that we have discussed, we, we're just following the rules. And what would be the advantage as well? First advantage is that the evolution and the equations, they are closer to the equivalent classical equations of motion. And sometimes this is an advantage for you to be able to spot similarities and differences between them. Again, depends on the problem you're trying to solve and it's going to be your call. But because of the similarities that exist, uh, they may facilitate a lot uh, if you want to establish this kind of connection. And also, uh, the Heisenberg picture may simplify computations as well. Fair enough, we're going to have a, a more detailed look at them. But we should note that all the physics has to remain invariant because that's how you define unitary transformations. And that's why when we started to define them, we started from the most general possible scenario. We said, okay, let's take a generic unitary transformation, taking you from picture one to picture two. You could have anything here and the expectation values, the transition amplitudes, everything has to remain invariant because the physics has to remain invariant. You have to be describing the same physics, although your uh, state space vectors may look different, 
and you're using the fact that they are not observables that you're going to have some kind of ambiguity in those mathematical constructs because of uh, global phases. Uh, still, if you cannot describe the same physics, then you are doing something terribly wrong. And we have a third picture, which is the interaction picture. And the key idea is that in many problems, the Hamiltonian of the system is going to be of this form. So you have H naught and you have H interaction. So actually this is misplaced. This is H int is the interaction Hamiltonian. Sometimes the arrows get a bit berserk. So it should be read like this. And this H naught is supposedly something you can solve uh, exactly or something whose evolution you can neglect and is only going to complicate um, you studying this system. For instance, this is a very widespread uh, transformation used in quantum optics. And to give you an example, let's look at this Hamiltonian from the gopert meyer transformation, the one which was in the length gauge where you had a system uh, which was interacting with uh, an external field. So here we would say that this guy here is H naught your atomic Hamiltonian, molecular Hamiltonian, whatever it is. And this other guy is the interaction Hamiltonian. Note that it could also depend on time. It is fully legitimate. So what you do is you remove the dynamics that occurs due to hate not from the time evolving state of the system in the the picture. So you would have something like this. Whereas before, when you went from the um, Schrodinger to the Heisenberg picture, you apply the transformation that would remove all the time evolution. Here, I'm applying a unitary transformation, which is going to remove only the evolution associated with H0. So this U0 is the time evolution operator associated with your Hamiltonian H0. And the advantage is that it simplifies a lot the form of the Schrodinger equation. So the first thing that we're going to have a look at here is that how expectation values of operators remain invariant when you go from the Schrodinger to the Heisenberg picture. This is actually the way it should be because uh, the physics cannot change when you apply unitary transformation. So to start with, let's consider then, let's just look at what happens to the state vectors. So here on the left-hand side, I have a state vector in the Heisenberg picture. And what actually you have done with regards to the state vector in the Schrodinger picture is you apply the transformation which was the inverse of the time evolution operator. So supposing you had a state vector psi s t, which would be a state vector in the Schrodinger picture at a time t, whereby this is then u t t dash psi s t dash, or here t naught. What effectively you are doing is you are using the transformation to undo the time evolution uh, which took your state from t naught to t. So this is what you would have uh, in the Heisenberg picture. Uh, sorry, Schrodinger picture. And in the Heisenberg picture, if you wish, the state would be frozen at T naught. But the expectation values of operators, which are the physically significant uh, quantities here, they cannot vary. So they have to remain invariant. So uh, let's consider, for instance, this expectation value of the operator OT, whereby in the Schrodinger picture you would write uh, 
psi s g operator psi s g. This is consistent with what we have learned and with what we have discussed so far, that in the Schrodinger picture, the state vectors vary with time and the operators are time independent. Now note that we can also write this like this. This would be Psi Schrodinger T naught U dagger T T naught. Here you have O and then here you have O also from T naught T Psi Schrodinger T naught. Correct? So what we're saying here is that the state evolves in time. And here also that the state evolves in time, which is what we should have for um, the uh, Schrodinger picture. But we could also analyze this in another way. If you look at this expression that we have, can you see how this is behaving? You could define an operator. So this is an alternative way of looking at things. An expectation value such that you have here psi t naught, which is psi Schrodinger t naught. So you can assume that the state did not evolve. U dagger t t naught o u t t naught psi Schrodinger t naught. Note that the expression is the same, but we are interpreting this in a different way. So we're saying here that the operator, not the state vectors, has evolved in time. So this is pretty much the assumption that you have when you go from one picture to the other, from what we have seen from unitary transformations, when you transform operators, you actually go from uh, one picture to the other so that we can use these. Note as well that this Psi Schrodinger T naught is what you would get for your Psi in the Heisenberg picture. It hasn't evolved, it has just stayed where it was. Meaning that we can define uh, OHT, mean, which is the operator in the Heisenberg picture as U dagger T, T naught, O in the Schrodinger picture, T naught, U, T, T naught. This is very interesting because you can get a lot of information here. First thing that you can see is that your operator has transformed the way you expect it to with regard to a unitary transformation. This transformation is making it evolve in time, which is not uh, the case in the Schrodinger picture. In the Schrodinger picture, it's just uh, the operator is fixed and the state vector evolves. And this expression that you have here and here for the expectation values, they are the same. So uh, it, the physics remains the same because what is physical is the expectation value of whatever operator you're measuring. This is what you observe in a lab and it has to be the same. So we can say then that these three things are important to us, that uh, the physics hasn't changed, the operator has transformed in a way that we expect, the state vector as well, and the picture remains consistent. So uh, this, this is quite an interesting scenario. So another uh, really, really important aspect 
of uh, the Heisenberg picture is how then you define the evolution of a system. Because in Schrodinger picture, we know we have a state vector and we evolve it um, starting from the time dependent Schrodinger equation. Now, what do we do here? Here, we have something called the Heisenberg equation, which is something we're going to have a look now. So what we're going to assume is we're going to consider the operator OH in the Heisenberg picture at a time T and the initial operator time at a time t naught equals zero. This is to simplify your life. You could get any c naught you want, but let me make it zero. So you see the difference already that we're talking about an operator varying time, not a wave function varying time, or not a cat varying time. So we're gonna take the time derivative of this operator and what we find is the following. So let's do g g t o h t. This is then, let's use the expression that we had here for this operator. So we can write this as g g t u dagger T not O H not U T not and we just do the derivative of the product. So this means that it's going to give me G D T U dagger T O H zero U T plus U dagger T D D T O H zero, which is not depending on T, is depending on zero. So this is zero U T plus U dagger T O H zero D D T U T. So we get an expression and uh, we are going to use also that earlier in this course we have seen uh, that when you talk about the time evolution operator so earlier in this course we have seen that g d t u t is given by minus h bar h s t u t. If you don't remember, have a look at time evolution operator that we have shown that it satisfies the time dependent Schrodinger equation. So uh, U satisfies the time dependent Schrodinger equation, which has to hold, it has to be like that. And we put S because we emphasize we're dealing here with the Schrodinger picture. And if you take the uh, dagger, so if you take the comp you take the conjugate of this, the Hamilton conjugate, you get that G D T U dagger T is one is I H U dagger T H S T. Here we used hemicity. So this is uh, 
the mission conjugate we're taking that a b dagger is b dagger a dagger where well, everybody these are two operators so we invert this we're using also that h is equal to h dagger because we're assuming hermeticity And we're using also that if you have alpha O, where O is an operator dagger, this is alpha star O dagger, which is this guy. That's why you change the sign. So here we say that HT is the Schrodinger. picture Hamiltonian. Fair enough. So this means if we rearrange all that and we had these expressions in terms of the time derivative of the time evolution operators here and here, we're going to replace this by what we get from the time-dependent Schrodinger equation and this by what we get from the time-dependent Schrodinger equation. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, thus, we can say that the dt OH t, whereby OH indicates um, an operator in the Heisenberg picture, this is going to give me uh, I divided by H U dagger T, H Schrodinger T, O Heisenberg zero, U T minus, I put plus minus, uh, U dagger T, O H zero, H S T times U T. So you see what happened. I used this expression here, and I used this expression here. And you have to account for a minus sign because of the complex conjugated in one case and not in the other. So this means that we have um, First, what is this here? So let's let's have a look at this very, very slowly. So this is then I H bar U dagger T H Schrodinger T U T correct? And here I write u dagger t. So note that I used unitarity and I inserted here something which is the identity operator. So uh, it doesn't matter if I insert it or not, unitarity works in my favor. And I have OH here. And on this other side, I have ut. And I do this again. Um, here, where I have u dagger t, o h, o, u t, u dagger t. So I inserted this again. Uh, h, ah, I want to do this in black. H Schrodinger T U T. So pretty much what we can see is that in this case, U dagger T H S T 
ut is going to be h heisenberg t and that u dagger t o h o u t is going to be o h t so this is how you propagate in fact your um operator zoo, which means that I can write d dt oh t s i over h bar. Now let me do this slowly. So I'm going to have H Heisenberg T O Heisenberg T minus O Heisenberg T H Heisenberg T and this is then equal to the commutator of both. And if H T and O H T commute, then we can say that O H T is a constant of motion. So this is what we call Heisenberg equation. And you can see, for instance, for those who have done dynamical systems, that this is very similar to what you have in terms of evolving uh, a classical quantity using Poisson brackets. The difference here is that you have uh, in, you have a common data. And this also holds for the definition of constants of motion here. Okay. So, um, so next, what we're going to do is to explain why the interaction picture simplifies the. Um, So what we're going to do next is to explain why the interaction picture simplifies the uh, time dependent Schrodinger equation. So what we're going to use is just, just to recall, we have just been through this. We have stated that if you consider a time dependent state vector in the interaction picture, this is going to be u naught dagger t psi t s where this is a state vector in the Schrodinger picture and this guy here is the time evolution operator in which I considered only a Hamiltonian h naught meaning excluding the interaction from a time zero to a time t. So uh, just to remember what we had, our Hamiltonian was H naught plus H int, whereby H int is the interaction, H naught is uh, this Hamiltonian, which uh, is not interesting for us uh, if you would like to explore certain aspects of the dynamics. So let's have a look. We are assuming H naught is time independent, as you can see to simplify our uh, life, but in principle, you could have anything. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the fact that the time dependent state vector in the Schrodinger picture 
is given by u naught t uh, psi i t, where psi i t is uh, the time dependent uh, state vector in the interaction picture. So we're putting the evolution back. Just to remember, here we have interaction picture. And here we have uh, Schrodinger picture. All right, so let's have a look. And the best way to start is to state the time dependent Schrodinger equation in the Schrodinger picture. So time dependent Schrodinger equation in the Schrodinger picture. which is given by i h bar g g t psi s t equals to h psi s t. Okay, now we know that our uh, interaction picture Hamiltonian and our Schrodinger picture of Hamiltonian are related by this. So we can replace psi s by this expression. Okay, so let's do that. And our left hand side of the time dependent Schrodinger equation is going to look i h bar d dt u naught t psi i t applying the derivative of the product to get i h bar d u naught d t psi i t plus i h bar u naught d psi i t d t. So we're going to come back to this. And we know as well what g u naught dt is. So we have this time evolution operator here. As every nice time evolution operator it has to satisfy the Schrodinger equation. Although we are just considering the Hamiltonian h naught, this has to hold. It has to be consistent, right? So we write using the fact that g u naught t dt is minus i divided by h bar h naught u naught t. Note that we're considering the lower bound uh, for which we're propagating in time to be zero. Um, uh, using this, then it gives the following, uh, that this left-hand side is going to be i h u naught t g d t psi i t whereby psi i is the wave function in the interaction picture the wave function so we know the the state vector plus uh, h naught u naught t psi i t okay so getting there and we know that our uh, right-hand side looks like h naught u naught psi i t. So I basically just replaced the state vector in the Schrodinger picture by u naught, which is the evolution operator associated with h naught evolving onto the state vector of the interaction picture. So um, to continue this, we can multiply everything from the left by u naught dagger. And this is going to give me then that 
the left hand side is going to be e i h bar d d t psi t in the interaction picture plus u naught dagger t h naught u naught t psi i t also interaction picture equal to u naught dagger h u naught psi i t interaction picture now you see how things are starting to look they are starting to look like a transformation there are even fireworks outside to celebrate this no i'm just kidding it's guy fox night so it's a bit annoying but we'll get over that so uh we find then if we move this guy to the right hand side we can rearrange and this is going to be i h bar d d t psi i t is equal to u dagger zero let me put t here i'm just getting lazy h minus h naught u uh u zero sorry i'm putting too much for t psi i t cat do you see what this is this is h int which is our interaction hamiltonian and we have a transformation here that is telling us that we're going from the schrodinger picture to the interaction picture because it's a consistent transformation to what we have done to the wave function and to the cat right when we applied the transformation to the state vector we had um u0 dagger state vector going to the interaction so from here we can conclude that h i is equal to u naught h int u zero so this is actually make it red is nicer this is really the hamiltonian in the interaction picture and you can see it's just the transformed interaction hamiltonian so this equation i h bar d dt psi i t equal to h i psi i t is the Schrodinger equation in the interaction picture and you removed all dynamics which was associated with the Hamiltonian h naught So that's the right thing to do in case you are not interested in the dynamics which is uh, imparted upon the system by part of the Hamiltonian. And if you want to focus on the interaction, you find this a lot in quantum optics. So just to summarize, we can we have these three pictures and we can say several things with regard to the observables in the Schrodinger picture the observables don't evolve uh, whereas the states evolve with time so if you consider a state psi naught at a time zero and you apply a time evolution operator, you're going to have a psi t, which is going to be different from psi naught. In the Heisenberg picture, all the evolution is in the observables. So, whereas here they didn't depend on time, here they're going to depend on time. But you stalled the evolution of uh, your uh, cat or of your state vectors. So whatever you had in the Heisenberg picture at the beginning, 
you are going to have in the end. And in the direction picture, you just uh, uh, cancel out the evolution associated with a Hamiltonian H naught, whose dynamics you're not interested in. So your observables are going to evolve in this way, and your states are also going to evolve in a certain way. But you use this to get rid of the evolution associated with H naught. So thank you for watching. And our next topic is then going to really be quantum light. And we're going to first discuss harmonic oscillators and how they can use how they can be used to uh, quantize a field. So keep on watching. I hope you enjoy it.